Hello and welcome to Occurrences Between Dates. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. I was recently asked the following question. Jeff, how do I count an occurrence between two dates? And I'm gonna answer that question in this video. Let's head to the first exercise, exercise one. Now, as with just about anything in Excel, there's several ways to do any given task. For this question though, I'm gonna use a pivot table. If you haven't used pivot tables, this first exercise is a brief warm up. A pivot table is designed to summarize data. So what we're gonna do is select any cell within our range, Go to insert pivot table. This is the range it's gonna summarize. Now, where do we wanna put the report? I'm gonna put it on an existing worksheet right here and I'm gonna click OK. And now what we do is define the structure for our report. So I wanna summarize this by region. So I'm gonna insert region into this rows layout area and I wanna sum the amount. So I'm gonna click and drag amount and put it into this values layout area. And what we see now is a summary report that summarizes all of these transactions by region, sum of amount. And let's turn on the total row for this table, table design, total row. And now I can tell that the total in the amount column is 14,457, and that agrees to the total in our pivot table report. Now, if I wanted to summarize this by item instead of by region, no problem. I can simply uncheck region, and I can insert item into that rows layout area instead. And now this report summarizes the data by item. And also the total is still 14,457. So how are pivot tables gonna help us count the occurrence between dates? Well, let's go ahead and go to the next exercise. Exercise two. Let's start with a basic pivot table. Insert pivot table. I wanna insert this here and click okay. Let's basically create a simple report. I'm gonna summarize this by region and amount. And let's turn on this total. Okay, 11,752, 11,752. So far, so good. Now, instead of grabbing all of these transactions, like this pivot table does, we wanna be able to grab a subset. In other words, we wanna be able to filter the results. So let's take a look at a few pivot table filters. The first one we can use is this filters layout area. So instead of summarizing by region, let's summarize by rep and let's put region into this filters area. So here we have the total, 11,752, but now we have a filter. So I could say, let's just show Midwest. And as we can see, now I get a subset. I only include those rows where the region is equal to Midwest. Maybe I wanna see Northeast, and maybe I wanna see Southeast. So this is one of the types of filters we have available to us. Let me remove that from our report. Another type of filter is called a slicer. And what we can do is right click this region and say add as slicer. And now we get this slicer which floats in the drawing layer above the grid. So we can position this wherever we want. We can also change the size, move it around. We also have tons of slicer options. So feel free to check out all these options depending on what you're working on. We can also increase the number of columns and there's lots of settings up here to play with. But at the end of the day, this is a filter. For example, if I select Midwest, I get the Midwest region. Then I click on Northeast and I get Northeast and you get the idea. So this is another filter. Let's clear this filter and let me delete this slicer. The next type of filter is timeline. Timeline works with dates. It's like a slicer, but for dates. So what I can do is I can right click any date field and then say add as timeline. Once again, we get this control that floats in the drawing layer above the grid. I can click and drag and move it around as desired. Now I could say, let me just see just the January transactions, just February, just March, just April. I could also change it from months to quarters and say, show me Q1, Q2, Q3. I could also change this to years, and I can also change this to days. Let's go back to months. Now, in addition to selecting each segment one by one, I can actually also click and drag. For example, I can click, hold the mouse down, drag and release, and that's how I can select multiple months. So that's another type of filter. And with these different filters at our disposal, let's go to the next exercise, exercise three. Now, the original question is, how do we count the occurrences between two dates? So let's set up a basic pivot table. Insert pivot table, existing worksheet, click a cell, click OK. I wanna count the occurrence of reps between January 1st and March 31st. So I'm gonna insert rep into the rows layout area. 
Now I'm also going to insert a mount into the layout area. But here's the thing. I actually want to count the number of rows for each rep. I don't want to sum the amount column. So one approach is to change the aggregate function applied to the amount column. In other words, instead of sum, we want count. How do we do that? A couple of different ways to do that. One way is to right click any value and say summarize values by and instead of sum, switch it to count. And now what we're really getting is the count over the number of rows or the count of occurrences for each rep. I could also do the same for counting the occurrences of regions or items. This current pivot table is summarizing all transactions. We want to use a subset. So we have a few filters at our disposal. And I could technically use any of these, but since this is a date, I'm going to go with timeline. I'm going to right click date and select add as timeline. Let's move this up here. So since I want to go from January 1 to 331, I'm just going to select January to March. And now I have the count of the occurrences of each rep between these two dates. And what if instead of whole months, we actually wanted to get more specific in terms of days? No problem. We can switch this to days. And now maybe we only want January 1st to January 10th. And now we've got it. We could also use those other filters if we prefer. For example, let's put date in this filters layout area. And now I can pick my dates, including selecting multiple items. As you can see, this is going to be more cumbersome because I have to check each individual date. But depending on what you're working on, this may be another option. In practice, though, since timelines are designed specifically to work with date fields, I feel like that would be a great choice for this type of project. Hey, hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 